In this video, I am talking about the latest dev blog that we got about Alliance Wars. I'm going to give my commentary on this thing, so let's go smash it! Hey, what's up all you Valley Max? Valley Flying here. I am back. Welcome to the channel. And today we are talking about this latest dev blog all about Alliance Wars. I'm going to read through this, give you my thoughts and give you some tips where I uh, have noticed what I've noticed from other games in the past playing similar type of competitive modes like this. I think this is a good thing. I've actually been very happy with all four of the dev blogs that they've released in 2019. So I think this game is headed in a good place. That doesn't mean to say that this game isn't without problems, though. There were also some major bugs that were released in 2019. Uh, hopefully, they've been all taken care of. And there are still some problems with uh, some of the content or some issues from 2018. One of which I talk about with Dorian from the Ravager Report podcast. I've uh, recorded that video. was in the midst of editing it when this came out last night. So I want to talk about this just because it's a little newsworthy. But... Uh, that interview went to about 35 minutes. Want to cut that down to about 10 to 20 minutes. But uh, shameless plug, guys, that full unedited interview is available right now on Patreon. But the edited version should be out around um, Sunday, Monday. Hopefully, I get to, to editing that down um, quickly. But regardless of that, let's get into this Alliance War Edition blog post that came out last night and guys I, I gotta say i'm very excited about this this sounds very much like star wars galaxy of heroes uh their territory wars let's just get into this because th there's a lot here so i'm going to try to make this as quick as possible but uh, th there is a lot here all right so this first paragraph right now so they they've had about two 200 players testing this got a lot of suggestions so i'm glad that they went wide with this Let's get into this paragraph, though. There's, there's a lot in this short little paragraph. Uh, the first big deal we detail we want to focus on is the Alliance War Cadence. During the playtest, each war lasted 12 hours. We received a great deal of feedback regarding the 12-hour timer, both after its announcement in the Alliance War blog and again after the playtest. Based on that feedback, we'll be adjusting the length of the war timer to 24 hours. So this is a great thing. You know, one of the complaints from that first Deadpool raid was in, when it was in that short term period of time is coordinating with uh, different time zones. So a lot of people didn't like 12 hours, myself included, but I'm glad they extended this to 24 hours and hopefully the way it's structured, uh, that will be enough time for everybody in each time zone to do what they need to do. The current plan is to schedule a war two to three days a week instead of daily. So. I'm not sure, but I, I think from what they say later, this could be a two to three day time period. And then when a war is not running, uh, you get to set up your defenses or this could be uh, two to three different wars. I'm not sure what they're talking about, but uh, the way it works in Star Wars, you do it one time a week at max and there's a setup phase which lasts for 24 hours, or a joining phase that lasts for 24 hours a set your defense phase which lasts for another 24 hours and then another attack phase that lasts for another 24 hours after that so it's a three-day event but this only occurs once a week at most um so i hope it's a similar model that's a little more manageable time wise uh while we tried out several cadences in the first few seasons of war uh we, we, we'd likely, we, geez, we'll likely try out a few, several cadences the first few seasons of war before final, uh, settle on a final schedule. So again, I like this whole sentence, this whole paragraph right here, because it looks like they're focusing on the feedback, taking that into consideration and making this game mode more player friendly. They also want to try out to see how this affects the players. And guys, I got to be honest, it's going to be about spending. They're going to see which one makes the most money and whatever people are spending on, that's what is going to stay. So uh, if you like what they're doing and you, you are a spender, I would recommend spending it in these uh, in the version that you like the best. All right. Go wide or well-rounded rosters. Now on to gameplay. Alliance War is not like any other game modes where you send one of your top squads into battle every hero counts so similar to blitz the wider your roster the more strategies that will open up for you and your alliance there will be no need to worry if your roster isn't as robust as others you don't need to attack or defend with full teams any uh, so anyone regardless of how many characters you have leveled up can jump in and make an impact during the war so 
This is good for newer players, newer alliances that don't have that big of a roster. Uh, but yeah, it looks like uh, people that have went wide with the roster and tried to get every character built up uh, that kind of struggle in raids because of that, they will be able to contribute a little more in Alliance Wars, or so it seems. Alliance planning. Coordinating with your alliance will be the key to victory. As mentioned, characters can be used only once. So again, there's, you're gonna need some strategy here either on attack or defense, so not on both. So again, similar to Star Wars here in this in that aspect, alliances will need to evaluate their roster to, to decide who will defend, who will to attack, who will attack, and um, which characters to use. In general, a player's total collection power is a good way to estimate their effect, have, how effective they're gonna be in war. All right, so yeah, so there's gonna be a lot of strategy involved. You're gonna want to get, my recommendation is at least three or four people that are very active with the planning that enjoy this type of stuff because to be honest guys this war this alliance war is not going to be for everyone it's going to be kind of an asshole and some people uh to be in a competitive alliance you're just going to be there and you're going to need to follow your leader's orders and set your defense and set your attacks and do that kind of stuff but you're going to need some people to coordinate this stuff and my recommendation is find three or four people that are really good at this stuff want to spend the time doing this stuff and are good at this stuff and they can lead it now the rake the my reasoning for three to four is a couple of them one you want to avoid burnout because with modes like this that require a lot of planning uh you can quickly go from liking it to hating it in a short period of time so i'd recommend that to avoid burnout but you also want to bounce ideas off of each other but you don't want everyone doing that because you know what they say about too many cooks in the kitchen so Find a few people, find that group, and let them do all the stuff for you, and the rest of the lines just follow. You're gonna need a lot of good communication, though. So if you don't already have good communication with your alliance, start working on that now because this mode will be uh, important that you have good communication with that. All right, uh, setting defense uh, in alliance four. The best offense is a good defense. There are 12 rooms to defend behind your hel helicarrier. Your alliance will need to decide whether to place room, uh, where to place rooms in your helicarrier, and how many characters from your roster will be in a defined room. Uh, it, if you choose to place characters in a helicarrier room, a shield minion. Uh, if you choose not to place uh, characters in a helicarrier room, a shield minion team will automatically guard it. You can place an entire team in your roster, or just place a few characters to guard the room with that shield team. When deciding your defense, remember that a shield team has a default power of 13,000. So, again, this is something that caters a little more towards those newer alliances because when you've been playing the game for a while, uh, your own roster is going to be way better than these uh, 13,000 total power. Now, like I said, there's going to be a lot of strategy involved because you want to place your rooms in a certain order. You want to place certain teams to defend those rooms in a certain order. Uh, and the reason is mentioned right here, these room bonuses. Helicarry rooms have positive and negative stat boosts as well as point values in a different, uh, in war. Destroying certain rooms weaken teams across an entire helicarrier while destroying other rooms can earn you more points. So uh, again, placement is going to be very important and it's going to be important that your alliance finds some good leaders to do this stuff for you guys and uh, figure out where. Eliminating the med B wipes out a global health boost. So that's probably not something you want up front that the enemy can uh, destroy very easily. You probably going to want some good defenses there. While blowing up a bridge guarantees a team 250 points, which... I'm interpreting that that is a big amount for this war, so you probably don't want that in the front two because then they could uh, get a lot of points. And it looks like whoever scores the most points will win. Destroying this rooms can be the key to victory. Yes. Heal mechanic. Uh, they mentioned that this is going through a lot of phases. Uh, and we'll see what the final iteration is because it looks like uh, you'll be able to heal some of your defensive units, but it also looks like uh, down in the end of the blog there's going to be another play test so we'll heal we'll see how this currently uh, stacks up the or, or what the final version will be when it is released all right the war store it looks like there's going to be some good stuff in here guys some character shards uh some good gear and uh looks like some good stuff so we'll we'll see uh what the actual uh rewards are all right q 
Q&A section. There's a lot of Q questions and answers in this, and I'll try to read through these real quick as well. How long will the Alliance War season last? Will there be a milestone similar to raid season milestones? Just like raids, we're looking for two week uh, war seasons. We don't have, we don't intend to have war milestones currently. So I'm not sure if the two week season means you're facing the same Alliance for two weeks. Um, again, we'll see on that when the final version is released. Maybe a suggestion, really. Can we get a clear defense button? They talk a little bit more about this down a little later in the post. So uh, it doesn't look like it's available yet uh, when it's released, but it looks like it will be in a future update. Uh, so, but I'm going to talk about that later when they mention it again down in the post. Are the strongest alliances getting the best rewards? Uh, basically, they're saying no. You're going to get as much as uh, a very strong lines if you're weak lines so I, I like this because there's not many catch-up mechanics for newer players in this game so this kind of gives them a boost but they also mentioned the bulk of the rewards will come from individual war earnings now i'm not sure how that earnings will be calculated maybe it'll be about the total power of the team that you face or the total power of the team that you go in with um we'll have to see uh, but that would give the higher powered alliances a little way to get a little bit more rewards. So if that happens, maybe not too much of a catch up mechanic for these newer alliances. But as far as the total rewards, it looks to be um, the same. When will the first the few, the full version go live soon? Say the longer they delay this, the better it is. I think they're taking more feedback, making more tweaks because. A lot of this, some of the things, not a lot, some of the things feel like they're way too rushed. Uh, one of the more recent examples, Dark Dimension, that doesn't feel like it was play tested enough before it finally went live. So I'm glad that they're uh, testing this a lot. So the longer they delay this, the better I think this will be because it looks like they're implementing changes. But uh, hopefully there's no bugs, guys. Come on. All right. Will defensive victories come into play when scoring? Uh, not at the moment, but they will change this. They may change this. I like that they're keeping this open. Um, I don't know. It might be a good thing. It might be a bad thing. But I like the, they're looking like they're basing a lot of their final decisions on feedback. So uh, we'll see what happens with that again in the final version. Currently, ties are considered losses. Uh, both alliances receive defeat rewards for their respective rankings. And I think that should be both getting this, uh, the top rewards. But then you could kind of sandbag if you know the alliance and say, all right, let's both score the same amount. So I guess you have to give them both the defeat rewards. Uh, however, we considered options like adding bonus points that trigger the criteria. Uh, basically, the strength, they don't expect a lot of ties, but uh, we will keep play testing and see what happens. It's been a concern with the people that did the play testing. Um, but I think it, it should be in both of losses when I think about people trying to sandbag. Alliances. But it, but it kind of sucks if you're both going hard and ends up in a tie. So uh, we'll see what happens with that. Uh, what level of time commitment do you expect Alliance competing seriously in this game mode? Because uh, there's going to be some alliances like my alliance that are going to be very serious about this mode. There'll be some that will be very casual. So this is an important question for myself. And I know probably you guys watching this video because if you're not too serious, you probably wouldn't be watching this uh, video. All right, both in terms of active gameplay, offense attacks and responsive gameplay like heals, strategizing and coordinated pushes. We expect war participation to be between 45 minutes and an hour a day after alliances have had some time to settle. So they're expecting that this will take a lot more time in the beginning. Now, I'm not sure if this is per player. So all 24 members of your alliance or for just the person leading this will have to put in this time commitment. Now, if this is happening two or three times a week one player is doing it and you can rotate these players not that bad but if it's every alliance member i don't know it sounds like a lot to me guys what do you guys think let me know in the comments down below all right how will cheaters be handled uh basically they're saying they're gonna try to handle cheaters as best as possible and i hope they do this this mode can be seriously uh, manipulated and go very very bad if cheaters are allowed to do whatever they do with their bots or whatever so hopefully they find a way to fix that or stop that before it even happens regarding the time to set up defenses will this setup be the same as attack phase where it's on a timer or will it be whenever war is not running basically it's say this is gonna you're gonna be able to set up your defenses whenever there's a war not running so if you're doing wars 
two times a week, then on those other days or the other five days, you can set up your defenses. Uh, any more controls for setting defense is going to be added. For example, uh, which players are in which rooms. We've also heard a lot of feedback during the playtest. One of the quality of life features will be adding in the future. So this is about that removing teams that I was talking about earlier. So this is where I'm going to talk about it. However, it will not be added until at during the initial launch of war. Alliance officers will be able to kick players' defenses from a rope, making it easier to adjust defenses. I think that is a good thing. We plan to add more quality of light features to, uh, to setting defenses in future iterations of war. So I'm not sure if that means being able to go into your Alliance members' roster and set their defenses. That might be uh, something pretty cool and, uh, again, something that saves time for just the people that want to do that stuff. I like that they're being able to kick defenses from a room in case, you know, someone makes a mistake and say, oh, can you fix this team, take it out and put it back in? Or, you know, if someone just is not using very good strategy, you can help them out and remove that team. All right. Will Alliance members largely be in similar time zones have a significant advantage if more players can monitor and react during the offense part of Alliance War? There'll be a lot of internal discussion about how we will, uh, and we feel that switch to 24 hours will help quite a bit. We're also revamping the heal system, so there's less need to be constantly watching on defense, which will be tough to do in worldwide alliances. Additionally, each war energy starts with two attacks, which should help counter any coordinated attacks uh, at the start of the war. So, um, yeah, it sounds like they think that it does this. I hope that when it actually is released, that uh, this, this actually isn't that much of a burden if you're spread across several time zones with your alliance. Are you planning on augmenting the current roster of characters to have any war specific buttons? Uh, they talked about war machine here and they plan to have a new military trait that's coming up. Interesting, interesting stuff here. All right, how do you foresee individuals dividing up their rosters when designing the game mode? Did you anticipate each player splitting half for offense and half for defense, or did you have other combination in mind? And I like this answer. Uh, the goal was to create a system with a lot of different strategies, and so far we've seen that this playtest, along with combination strategies, saw in our internal playtest. We're excited to see how this expands. So am I, guys. I'm, I'm very excited. Uh, when the mode is released and new characters are added along the way, one interesting strategy. We saw a player using smaller squads of one to three to try to take over weaker opponents. In most cases, it was a high risk, high reward move. And it, if successful, it allowed Alliance to reserve other players for a, a extra attack. So by the sounds of it, I think there's going to be a lot of areas that you need to defend in each room. They mentioned 12 rooms uh, in the upper part of the blog post. So uh, how many characters will you need to defend? Uh, each room it sounds like a lot so maybe you'll be running into more of those shield minion teams more often than uh, I originally expected all right do we have another round of playtests I look forward to and again I, I like that they're doing this again yes they're doing more playtesting getting more feedback uh, this is the biggest thing that they've built this at right so I'm glad that they're doing the playtesting I'm glad that they're communicating the current versions of what they're seeing and uh, I like that they're leaving things open to some of the feedback that the play testers might give so uh, good job guys I hope this game continues to move in the right direction uh, I, I like what I'm hearing so far about Alliance Wars guys and I hope you are too let me know in the comments what you think of this Alliance Wars do you think this will be great do you think this will be a big thumbs down um, the good thing is it looks like they're li listening to feedback right now so um, leave your feedback. Let, let them know what you think. Um, if you like this video, please subscribe to the channel. Like I mentioned, there is an unlisted video on Patreon right now if you want to support the channel that way. There's also a link to Bluestacks if you want to play Marvel Strike Force on your computer. I will see you guys next time. Check out that interview that I did with Dorian coming up soon. Uh, you, uh, it is probably a very very important video that you should watch all right guys thank you for watching i will see you guys next time one question before i go what you're gonna do brother what valley flying all the valley come down on youtube valley flying out